Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 21st of September today. We're going to do an update on Bitcoin. As well as that, I'm going to throw in Ethereum and Ripple as well. Um, we've got some really, really interesting things to discuss in today's video. Um, so probably we're seeing one of the biggest catalysts we've seen in Bitcoin since the introduction of CME futures uh, in December 2017, which, as we all know, led to the major crash in Bitcoin from 20K downwards to 3.2K. Um, so, yeah, we've got the release of BACT or BACT is going to go live on Monday, 23rd of September. And I think it's very, very interesting how we're seeing fundamental analysis in the form of a very important catalyst in BACT going live coinciding with some very very interesting technical analysis I, I could see a very nice bullish setup which i've been going on about for quite a while now and that's essentially what i want to put across to you and demonstrate in today's video i'll talk about the point of invalidation and how i see price playing out over the next few days um so yeah if you're interested in what i've got to say then stay tuned guys good to be back so it has been a while since my last video and apologies i've been a little bit ill of recent feeling a bit better today but um yeah i had to get this video in there we're approaching back which is um is, is, is i anticipate it being very big to be honest i mean i'm not a big fundamentals kind of guy i'm not gonna research all these different fundamentals for me uh, all i take into consideration is the fact that bact is a major catalyst and has the potential to bring in a lot of volatility and so i look for confluence with something like that with the catalyst something that can cause volatility and i look for confluence with technical analysis so all right so what we're going to do from a technical analysis point of view we're going to um, go through my wave count and we're going to look at this major pitchfork that you can see before us so we're looking at bitcoin here on the daily chart and so those of you who are familiar with my videos um, you'll know that I've been looking at this major pitchfork to the upside here and the wave count that I've got is this being a clear impulse up here wave one wave two and I've got this all as a wave three and it is pretty much a 4.236 extension of uh, wave one coming up to here okay so I've got this consolidation here really being a wave four now I think if it wasn't for backs there would be a good chance that price would have continued higher within this pitchfork, maybe using this lower median line as support. But generally what happens before a major catalyst, you get price coiling and consolidating, awaiting you know, the outcome and the release date of that, of whatever catalyst it is. So yeah, you can see here, we've really gone sideways and we're basically gonna coincide with this lower warning line here almost at the same time as the release date, or not release date, but the time that BATS goes live on Monday 23rd. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with BATS, and as I say, I'm not a huge fundamentals guy, but BATS essentially, it allows, it's another form of uh, Bitcoin futures that uh, can be traded. But basically the difference from the CME and SIBO futures contracts is that with BACT, it'll allow you to, when the contract terminates, you'll be able to, um, the transaction of the contract will be in return for uh, for Bitcoin rather than cash. Cash is what you get with the, your futures contracts in CME and SIBO. So that is the, the main difference. And obviously, insiders will have a, a much better knowledge of what the do, where the dollar is going to be in the future. But if they're anticipating a crash in the dollar, for example, it's going to be a lot more desirable to exchange your your futures contracts for Bitcoin rather than the dollar in the future. Or even if the dollar stays stable and Bitcoin flies again, you would want to see um, Bitcoin at the end of all of that rather than 
the dollar. So obviously there's lots more details about BACT, but uh, I won't go into that. Um, obviously they've made some affiliations with some large, well-known and trusted companies to try and get it um, you know, widely adopted within society. But yeah, let's stick to the TA. That's what we uh, I like to specialize in. So let's stick to that. So first of all, we've got a major wave one, wave two, wave three, and this is our wave four. Now, the subwave count is very much the same as I've been mentioning in the previous videos. We've not really seen any invalidation as of yet. So I called this initial move down a W, looking at this as an X wave and this three wave moved down as our Y wave. And I mentioned how it was a truncation in the sense that Y did not come down lower than W, okay? And the first inclination to me that this was gonna be a truncation was Ripple. It was the Ripple chart that told me that this was likely to be a truncation. Um, and the point of invalidation of this would be the bottom of W. You know, if we go down lower than W, then it's no longer truncated and we could easily collapse down further. Now, interestingly, with W, it came down. So this level here around 9100, it came down to the same point that this consolidation um, formed its high at. So you can see the high was made on this candle here. <clears throat> so it tested it perfectly. And now I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I'll just highlight it again. So it's just going on the daily. And I just want to show you what happened during the previous rally. So we go up, we consolidate, we go sideways, and we look at the top of that range. Now, when you get your breakout of that range, it comes down to the top of that range again. It retests it. And then we see the same thing kind of play out. So again, we consolidate, we break out of this range here. And then what will it do? It comes down and tests the range again. Okay, once more, we've got our, uh, our highs for the, the sideways block here. We break out, come down, retest those highs. Okay, now we see another example of that at this level here, where we consolidate, break out, and we come down, retest it, it to the point. Okay, so it's kind of like a characteristic of the Bitcoin chart in the sense that it's doing that very, very nicely in almost that stepwise manner. And so for me, that is just kind of like, as I say, the characteristics of the chart. And we've seen a perfect example of that here. So we've had that consolidation of the high of the ranges here, and we've tested it twice very, very nicely. Now for me, with that, with correlation, with the fact that uh, the ripple chart, which I'll show you later, is also sat at very significant support and also this major pitchfork which has originated from this price action here it's an original pitchfork which means it's followed a very impulsive gradient suggesting that it is impulsive um, and we've been squeezed in to this lower warning line here almost to the t we're hitting this line right now we have if we will go in on the hourly shortly and uh, you'll see that we kind of overshot it but for me that's not significant i don't mind the lower warning line slightly overshooting this is a uh, a pitchfork that originated from 16th of December 2018. So it's been running for a long time. I don't care if on the hourly chart it's kind of um, broke below the lower warning line. That's insignificant. You know, a major weekly, monthly close below the lower warning line is significant. Um, all right, now on top of that, we've got this pitchfork to the downside. So let's address that again for hourly chart. We'll look at that. So this pitchfork has been essentially drawn off the, the first uh, three swings here. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, and it's a modified shift pitchfork, which, is, which has been holding price the best. So from this third pivot, we got the pitchfork and price came down, tested the lower median line really, really nicely. We then rebounded, hit our median line, and we've come down. And rather than hitting the lower median line, there's a bit of a show of strength here. And that's due to the fact that we're retesting that significant 9100 level which was the top of this range here so we were then we then went up and because obviously we failed to hit the low median line that was a show of strength and we pierced the median line taking us up to the upper median line now here we're finding resistance and we've not managed to get really significantly above this upper median line uh, so far we've come down tested the median line bounds, test the median line again, and now we're at the upper median line. You can see this pitchfork is being respected really, really nicely. And so for me, this pitchfork is really gonna help determine 
whether I'm going to be um, going long or not. Um, so I, I want to see basically price get above this upper median line. For me, that would be a significant show of strength. So it's not really done that since uh, 10th of July. Okay, so that would be a significant show of strength, especially if price is staying within uh, above this lower warning line here. So that's essentially what I'm looking out for. Um, <clears throat> so invalidation for this whole move, as I say, would be uh, 9,000 or 9,082, yeah, around that level. Um, so yeah, should that happen, should price come down and test this level of 9,000 again, then I would have to completely change my count. Yeah, I'd completely change it. And I would expect a, a much more aggressive shoot down, at least testing 7,500. And I suspect probably 6,500 would get tested uh, because we'd be correcting the whole move up. And I think the 0 0.618 sits around 6,500. Oh, sorry, was it? Uh, no, the 0 0.5 was at 6,500. And it ties in with this horizontal range here. So yeah, that would be a preliminary target, but we'd be, have to use Elliott Wave also to, to home in on that one. But as I say, that is not my preferred count at all. Uh, I, at the moment, I think this bullish count is very much the most favorable. Um, so yeah, these are the main pitchforks that I'm watching at this moment in time. Now, if we go in, let's take a look at the hourly. Uh, so you can see here now on the hourly we can see we've pierced this lower warning line slightly then we saw pretty impulsive looking price action to the upside um, to take us back above the um, lower warning line and then we've consolidated you can see here price coming down slower looking more corrective uh, here how far have we retraced so uh, so we've retraced 0.5 wouldn't be surprised at all to see us test 0.618 um, but yeah, I expect probably, probably 9,600 to hold. Uh, but the stop really would have to be around 9,080. That's the main uh, point of invalidation for me. Um, because there's always that risk of a, a sudden wick down and then shooting up, you know, a bit of a shakeout. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, and on Bitcoin, in terms of where we go following the move to the upside, I'm essentially, well, you can do a fib extension of wave zero to three and extend that from where the WXY finished and your 0.618 is at around 23,000. 23, um, but really I'd be targeting the upper warning line. Yeah, because the problem with Elliott Wave and using fibs as targets, any of these fibs can get hit. Yeah, so I like to use confluence with the pitchfork and obviously the subwave count of the of that move up will also be very significant okay um so yeah we'll have to home in on it when we get more price action but it's a big move to the upside basically and uh the risk is very small so irrespective it's a it's a fantastic opportunity in my opinion and with especially considering we're on the point of a major catalyst which um for me, yeah, it's probably the most significant since the introduction of CME futures. All right, so that was Bitcoin. Now, I, I promise you we'll look, take a look at Ethereum and also Ripple as well. So for me, Ethereum is even more attractive than Bitcoin, okay? Ethereum is where uh, my money is at the moment. And let's take a look at Ethereum. So with Ethereum, Ethereum really likes its pitchfork. So really adhere to this downward pitchfork very nice. You can see price bouncing off the the lines very nicely. We then broke to the upside, suggesting uh, switching, you know, a loss of this downtrend, gone into the uptrend. And yeah, in terms of the long term count, it's a little bit hazy, but you can call this a major wave one, major wave two, major wave three. I've got this as a clear five wave count up to here. And then this can be a wave four. Now it's a pretty deep wave four, almost overlapping with wave one, but not quite. So it's not breached any rules there. Um, and this downward pitchfork was what I was closely monitoring and I've been tweeting about it. We've been discussing it in my discord at length. Uh, I said this is the most important pitchfork. I, I focus on all of these cryptos down the right hand side here. These are the top 15 market cap cryptos, which obviously change week by week. But um, yeah, by looking at those and putting all these pitchforks on, 
I found this pitchfork to be the best. And so this was the one that I had all my focus on. I've been highlighting it to you in Twitter. In Twitter, um, And yeah, so far it's played out well. So on the four hourly, let's have a good look at this pitchfork. So basically using our first two swings here, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, we've come down and we, we came down to the, it was the 0.618 fib, first of all. So if we do our fib retracement, so starting at this point here, doing our fib, so it hit the 0.618 very, very nicely, okay? So one clear reason to find a bit of support. And so these dotted red lines are plotted on here. They're basically historic, significant historic price levels where we've seen previous reversals, okay? So again, there is a dotted red line around $164. It was a significant horizontal level looking at historic price action. And uh, yeah, we've then run into the 223. So that's another very significant level going back. It's been tested multiple times. I'm not going to show you all the times it's been tested. Take a look for yourself. It's a very, very significant level. So I'm not surprised we found a bit of resistance at that point. But basically what I want to show you is I was explaining to the Discord, this was a show of strength here. You see how we got above the upper median line? We broke above it. That was the first time during this correction that it had gone above the upper median line. You can see here, the upper median line acted as resistance here, multiple times here. Eventually, after hitting the 0.618 fib retracement, it then had a show of strength. It broke the upper median line, and this is when I started to get interested. Uh, and it was at this point that it tested the upper warning line and rather than bouncing downward sharply, it was going sideways. And that is when I started building up my position. Uh, basically, it was it was accumulation just below resistance and eventually we broke to the upside. Now, when did this major move start? It started around 6th of September. 6th of September is another very key date. So that was when uh, BACT started allowing... Um, you to deposit funds on the platform, okay? Now, I don't have any inside knowledge, but there will be people with inside knowledge and they will know how much has been deposited within BACT and that will give an inclination as to how much is gonna be invested in Bitcoin, okay? So there will be people with that knowledge and the fact that we're seeing, you'll, if you scroll through the other alts, you can see on Ripple is another example we'll look at in a moment, but a lot of them had a significant swing low on the 6th of September. Obviously, Bitcoin can't really start moving up because <clears throat> it's still weighted. It's backed is mainly going to affect Bitcoin, whilst the alts are not as connected. So they're free to move before uh, back goes live. But um, yeah, I think it's very interesting that these moves, a lot of them started on 6th of September. And now basically, uh, since this move, I've got this as a initial impulse correction and yeah i've got the end of wave three here labeled but i think it's probably going to go higher in my opinion um so wave one wave two almost retraced 100 percent. so we came up to the 2.618 okay and now there is an argument we could come down uh as a major wave four before going higher but i've got a feeling we could with the um, in view of Bitcoin sitting at support, we could shift this three to the 4.236 and probably test $274, which is a very significant horizontal level. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a wick above and a candle close below 266, which is the significant FIB level. Okay. And then the four may retest this uh, original pitchfork that we've got. So often you, you will often see, especially in crypto, because of those uh, exponential price moves that these um, even the original pitchforks, they can get broken to the upside and then the upper warning line can then act as support. So that's one way in which it could play out. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so the sub wave count for this wave three. So we've got a wave one, two, one, two, three, four, and then the five, as I say, could take us up higher to around there, yeah? So we'll have to see how it plays out. Um, I wanna show you also some significant um, Camarilla pivots. So these are indicators that if you followed me 
for a while, you'll we'll know how I've demonstrated these Camarilla pivots in the past. So <clears throat> it's on the daily chart that's significant. So let's just take off all the other drawings. Basically, with Camarilla pivots, once you take out the R4 or the S4, it then often acts as either support or resistance. So you can see here we've broken above the R4 and it's, it is acting as a level of support at the moment. And that's sitting at around $213. So obviously you can see wicks below this, but essentially I would want to see closing candles above the R4. Otherwise, I'd be a little bit concerned about a deeper retracement here, at least to the, the R3, possibly. Yeah. So, and the R3 is at $192. So I really do want to see this R4 hold. I don't want to see really any daily closes below it. So that's one of the key things that I'm monitoring on Ethereum. Talking about Camarilla pivots, I just want to switch back to Bitcoin a moment and I want to show you the significance. So, well, first of all, on the daily, you can see here we're finding resistance at the R3. Okay. And you can see the significance of these levels. You can see here, we've, where do we turn around here at the R4, support the S3, uh, again, resistance at the R3. Okay, here's an example of breaking above R4, yeah, acting as support, going up. Um, <clears throat> so here's another example of breaking out above the R4, retesting it. Okay, um, but it's the weekly chart I want to show you on uh, Bitcoin. So we are, once R4 breaks on this, it, it's, it marks a potential very big strong move to the upside. So... Here you can see it was the S4 that really held price here when we came down to around 3.2K. The R4, sorry, S4 was at 3.4K, uh, slight overshoot, uh, but we then shot up slightly, we've gone through the R3, retested the R3, and then found resistance at R3, okay? Um, yeah, so R4 here is at 11.4, sorry, 11.449. So I wanna see a closing weekly candle above that. That would be a significant show of strength for me, after which I would expect that 11.4 level to act as good support. Okay, so that's another one of the key things I'm looking out for across crypto. Uh, yeah, back to Ethereum. So let's go back to our usual format. Uh, and let's zoom in on Ethereum. So you can see at the moment, Ethereum's kind of curving out a bottom here, just below that significant 223 level. And is coinciding with Bitcoin also um, finding uh, a level of support. Now it is following this pitch for pretty nicely at the moment and it's using this upper median line as support. We'll have to see if it holds. If it doesn't, obviously we would then expect price to come down possibly towards the median line. At the moment, I'm giving it every chance to act as support here. Um, so yeah. That's how I'm looking at Ethereum. I do think we could have a nice run into around two seven four dollars, after which we'll probably see a bit of a pullback, probably as a wave four before making a more impulsive, a further impulsive move up to make a wave five. <clears throat> okay, now last chart that I wanted to mention, and it was the chart that really gave me the inclination that uh, Bitcoin was finding support, and that's Ripple. So with Ripple, let's go in on the daily to begin with. So it's the long-term count we want to look at. Let's take off that fib. Um, so basically, long-term count here, we've got a wave one, two, three is up to here, and this is a wave four, okay? Now, the characteristic of this chart is that you see these WXY playouts, and uh, yeah, you see these long-drawn corrective sequences, and they follow a WXY playout, in the sense that it may, it's made up of three waves down, W, three waves up, X, three waves down, Y. Y comes down to the same level as W, forming a truncation, and then we get this really aggressive move up. And we see the same thing playing out here in this wave four of three. So we get three waves down to make W, three waves up to make X, three waves down to make Y, and Y again coming down to the level of W. Okay, we then shoot up once more. And what are we seeing now? We're seeing the same kind of thing. So three waves down W, three waves up X, three waves down Y. Okay, so I have been telling the Discord that 0.24 was a really, really significant level. Again, these red dotted lines are significant horizontal uh, price action levels. Um, so yeah, 0.24 was this low. 
And also using the pitchfork, so the pitchfork using first pivot at the high here, second pivot at the swing low, swing high, first, um, yeah, first three major pivots, give us our pitchfork, it's a shift pitchfork price, adhering to this uh, corrective sequence pitchfork. And yeah, we're finding support at the 0.24, which coincides with the upper median line. So yeah, really to confirm that this move is going up, I wanna see price getting above the upper warning line, okay? But I do like that we are seeing, if we zoom in, some impulsive price action since hitting the 0.24, okay? I've got this probably, I know our absolute low is here, but I'm looking at this as possible, a possible truncation and a failure to come down lower. I'm probably starting the count here because I can't see this looking impulsive, to be honest. It looks very three wavish. Likewise, uh, with this from this low here, it's looking quite three wavish. Uh, so here I'm starting to see possible five wave count, and we do see a nice fib relationship. If we start our count from here, wave one, two down to here, and we hit the 2.618 almost to the T. We then retrace, uh, if we retrace our wave three, so far we've hit the 0.5. Wouldn't be too surprised for us to test our 0.618, and that's around 0.27 dollars. For me, stop-wise, it would have to be at least around 0.25 dollars. Um, obviously, Ripple has a huge way to go up. Yeah, so the risk reward is pretty astronomical because we're targeting, you know, at least all-time highs and and going much higher. Um, and this the stop, the point of invalidation is 0.24 dollars, so we're really not far away. So. The fact that we've got a major catalyst, we've got other crypto charts showing that we're sitting at support. I can't, you know, it's pretty irresistible to me, this 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 setup. So um, obviously confirmation is us getting above this upper warning line. But for me, as I say, I'm mainly invested in Ethereum. I do think though Ripple has further to go. So once kind of Bitcoin runs out of gas, I'll probably be shifting funds to Ripple. And especially once we get above this upper warning line, I expect price to start shooting up pretty aggressively once it gets above this upper warning line. So that's when I might start shifting funds into Ripple. All right, so <clears throat> yeah, as I say, I've been keeping the Discord updated with the regular videos on crypto. Uh, yeah, if you're interested, yeah, check out my website, wave618.com. You'll see links in the description if you want to sign up. To, if you want my educational course where I cover everything I've learned in trading, uh, I go through it in detail. I think it's 30 modules, about 20 hours of video footage. And uh, yeah, um, I do every month is a couple of 50% uh, discounts. If you check the end screen to this video, you'll see the, the link for that. And um, yeah, as I say, the cryptology service may have to end up putting prices up at some point because um, there's going to be high demand, I know, as, as uh, crypto starts moving. So if you're interested in getting in, obviously, the price that you get in at is the price that you'll get continued to, uh, to be charged with the subscription. It's, it will remain static in that way. So yeah, um, as always, appreciate all your support across social media, YouTube, Twitter. So thanks a lot for that. And we'll have to see how things play out. But I've got a duty to my uh, Cryptology members. They're obviously getting the regular updates. And obviously, I'll throw in information for you guys when I get the opportunity. Uh, but some really interesting times ahead. As I say, price with technical analysis, price always has the possibility of going up or down. And I've mentioned clearly the invalidation points. Um, and as I say, the risk is pretty tight relative to the reward. So uh, sitting on the point of a major catalyst, uh, for me, it's very, very interesting. Can't wait to see what happens this week. Uh, so yeah, exciting times ahead, guys. All right, I think we'll wrap it up. And yeah, take care.